This is the Manix 2 Lightweight. And this is a very purpose-built knife, but that also means that it's not really a knife for everybody. Though it is a knife for a lot of people. So the Manix is one of Spyderco's older models. It's sort of one of their signature models. You go back a few years and there were lots of debates on the Spyderco forums and places like that between this and the PM2, for which was Spyderco's best knife. Um, the Manix line is really distinguished by two major features. One, it's got your ball lock here, which basically what happens is there's a ball, either steel or ceramic, that sits right here under the tang of your blade. And basically this little actuating thing here, it's got a spring right behind there. There you go, you can see the spring right there. You pull this back and the blade tang can clear. You, and basically now that ball slides forward, locks the blade into place, you pull it back and the blade can swing freely to close. Gives you basically this spring you can see as I open it, that spring depresses and that gives you your detent. So you fire it out like that and it leads to a very nice action both ways. While also, much like the compression lock, keeping your fingers entirely out of the blade path, which is a very nice safety feature. It's a very good lock. It's a lock these days you pretty much only see on the Manix, and it is one of my favorite locks, period. It's a lock that I wish that Spyderco would use on other knives. But right now, the Manix seems to be the way to get it. Specs-wise, this is the lightweight version, which has FRN handles, made in Golden, Colorado. This is one of Golden's signature models. This version is an S90B, but you can find this in pretty much every steel under the sun. Um, they've had more steels in this lightweight version than they have in the G10 version, especially in recent years. You can get this right now in um, SPY 27. You can get it in cheaper steels like CTS 1BDN. Um, you can get it in S90V, which this one is. You've been able to get it in Maximit. I think you can still get it in Maximit. They're coming out with it in 15V. That might even be part of their Rex 121 drop next year. There's all sorts of steels. M4, if there's a steel that you like, MagnaCut, the Spyderco Manix 2 Salt in MagnaCut was in the lightweight version. Rex 45, GP Knives has exclusives in that. I believe they're still in stock. If there is a steel that you like, there is a good chance that you can get a Manix 2 lightweight in it. The one glaring exception I can think of is I can't think that they've made one in K390, which is a shame because this would be awesome in K390. It's possible I just don't know about it. But anyway, this lightweight version has really become the primary platform for the Manix. Not that they've stopped making the G10 versions, but they have made more variations here in this lightweight version. This lightweight version is lightweight. It is a big knife. Um, it is three and three eight inches, but it is only three ounces for the whole knife. And when I say a big knife, it's not just that it is long. You know, if I take out my Endura here, it's about the same length as an Endura, but it is a much larger knife, which has some benefits and some problems, as we'll talk about later. But this is a tall knife. There is just a lot of knife here, more than it is a long knife. It's not a short knife, it's full size, but it is big. Blade stock here is 125 thousandths. And now one of the big differences between this and a lot of other spider cove knives, so this is sort of their leaf-shaped blade profile, rather than a dropped leaf like you get on something like the PM2. This is a more neutral leaf, a bit more spear pointy with your tip a little bit below your pivot here. Not very much distal taper. That means that this blade stock stays about the same thickness the whole way out. What that means is even though you've got this full blade height here, especially toward the tip, this does not, and you can sort of see it in how thick that bevel is there. This is still a factory bevel. I haven't resharpened this one. But this is not as thin and slicey as a lot of other Spydercos. This is designed to be a little bit thicker behind the edge, and you've seen that. You know, over on the Spyderco forums, people have looked at these, and you'll get readings of 20 to 25 thousandths. I think sometimes even more than 25 thousandths behind the edge on some Manix 2s um, Manix twos or Manix 2 Lightweights, exact same blade shape on both of them. This blade here is really meant for hard use. 
This is, it's not a thick blade. And because it's not a thick blade, it will pass through material relatively quickly. But it is a pretty thick behind the edge blade, especially for how thin the stock is. The tip is relatively robust, again, given how thin that stock is. It carries a lot of that thickness out to the tip. It does pierce and stab very naturally. And then you've got, just like the PM2, you've got jimping right above and below that blade, which makes it very easy to grip right here and have a ton of control right over that blade. This is a blade that works really well when you want to have a big slab of steel between your hands, because again, it's a pretty tall blade and have a lot of control over it and push it a little bit harder. Even if I don't use my other three fingers, even if I'm just pinching the knife, just from this choil and this thumb ramp here, I have tons of control over this knife and my back fingers don't have to do very much. Especially if I really choke up here, I can really crank on this blade and you combine that with the way that they have chosen to grind this blade. And this blade to me screams hard use. This is a knife even more than the PM2, um, which is a knife that has a ton of distal taper, gets very pointy down by that tip. And so is a knife, especially if you sharpen it aggressively, can become more of a slicer and can feel more like an EDC knife. This, you've got to really aggressively sharpen to get it more slicey. This wants to be a beater. This wants to be a knife that you can hammer on. This wants to be a knife that is, has a bit more of that edge thickness and edge toughness, especially in a steel like your S90V here, which is, while it's not a tough steel, you know, it's meant to be a high edge retention steel, it is tougher than a lot of those other high edge retention steels. And so if you want this level of edge retention, S90V is a great choice. Um, this was a sprint run from a while back. This is a knife, this is a blade in particular, that is meant for those hard duty tasks. This is meant for your home improvement tasks. This is meant for, oh crap, I got a bunch of carpet to cut through or a bunch of drywall to cut through, or I've got to break down. I've got an entire pile of boxes that I've got to break down. That's what this, that's what this blade is really good for. And you know, they've got some staples in them. So if I catch a staple, I don't want to get dinged up too much. That's what this blade is really good for. Conversely, this blade starts to struggle a bit when you put it into lighter duty tacks. Again, I'll bring out my Indela here. This Indela blade is skinnier in that it's not as tall. It's less fat, which makes it much easier to fit into stuff. If I'm just trying to either get down onto a table, like do a utility cut like that, or I'm just trying to get between things or get around something, or just do, you know, little cuts like paring knife cuts, the sort of stuff that, you know, that a lot of dip more delicate cuts tend to be. And that honestly, a lot of your EDC cuts tend to be. A lot of times you're either cutting down onto a box or you're cutting some twine up in your hand, or you're trying to cut through a zip tie and get under it and cut through stuff like that. This blade, because it's not that tall, it's relatively skinny, and because of the way they ground it that comes down to a super sharp bottom edge, this excels at those EDC tasks. Conversely, this big fat blade, it's not easy to get to this tip. It's, it's not that easy to use for utility cuts. You know, if I've got my, you know, a box I wanna get into here, I've gotta tilt my wrist pretty far over to get to that tip and drag it through. Similarly, this doesn't do drag cuts very well. All this belly here, I've got to cant all the way over so I'm just getting tip and not cutting with that belly. When you're doing a drag cut, you really do want to cut with that tip to get that dragging effect. Um, similarly, for you know my little delicate cuts, things like that, it's just a lot of blade. It's a lot of blade to get around stuff. It's a lot of blade to fit into spaces. It's just a big blade, and you combine that it's a tall blade, when you combine that with the fact that it is not ground to be super slicey, this blade, we're, and we haven't even gotten to the handle yet, this blade doesn't feel great as an EDC. It feels like total overkill for a lot of EDC tasks. You feel like you're carrying a blade that is way bigger than what you need for a lot of your EDC stuff. A lot of that office stuff, a lot of that general around the house stuff, and even for just light duty things like gardening, stuff like that, 
this blade feels like overkill in a way that something like the Native or the PM2 does not. Um, and a lot of other EDC stalwarts do not. Even if I compare this to something like a like a hinderer. This is cut, this this is ground better than a hinderer. This will cut better than a hinderer uh, because those hinderer blades are less tall. It's easier to get a, say, especially like a hinderer Warncliffe blade, it's easier to get that blade behind something and make that cut. Let's say if I even pull out my Sabenza here. This Sabenza blade is just easier to get because it's less tall and because it is also slicier behind the edge. It's just easier to use this for those everyday tasks. And honestly, that's with a knife that is even larger than the Mannix 2. So this is a knife that you can, in fact, hammer on. I don't want to understate that. This is a blade that because it carries that thickness out in that way, because this is ground to have a little more edge toughness, and because of the insanely good grip you can get and the control you can get on the blade with these two spots right here, with this troll and this thumb rip, this does great when you want to push it hard. But it feels like a whole lot of knife when you're not pushing it hard. It feels like a, knife, a blade that is purpose-built for hard use, not a everyday carry that can be used hard. And that same sensation extends even more so to the handle. This handle is big and it is opinionated. This handle is telling you exactly where it wants your hands to be. There are only two logical places to put your hands on the Mannix. You can either, and this is the preferred grip, you do exactly what I've been doing before. You choke up right in this choil and this thumb ramp. You put your next three fingers right in index and then right on this big old belly and that works very nicely now this is a knife that will work better in people with larger hands actually in my smaller hands this this little point here is in a bit of an awkward spot where i have to kind of stretch these two fingers back a little more than i'd want to you can't cramp two fingers into here so i've got to spread my hand out more than i would like to and honestly, the knife feels a little bit awkward for my relatively smaller hands in this position. And look at how much butt I've got sticking out the back. You can also grab it like this, where you've got your thumb up on the ramp and you've got all four fingers on this handle. Now, the problem with this is you are really far from the cutting edge and you feel it, especially when you start to cut with the front of this blade. The Just the leverage alone, if there's any resistance in the cut, you feel that trying to push this blade out of your hand. You have to actively keep working your wrist to keep that blade in the cut to keep control over it. Again, might not be the case for folks with larger hands, but with this very large choil um, and the fact that just, again, you're not even snug up against the edge of that choil. When you grab it like this, you're sitting even a little bit further back into this first finger index here it feels like you're really, really far from the blade, even with your thumb up here. And with your thumb back here, it feels like I'm holding a blade on a stick. Like I've got no control over this blade whatsoever. Now, this is again, the benefit of having these super, as I like to call them, opinionated handles. A handle that tells you exactly where it wants you to be. This grip in particular, your hand is not budging. You could literally, like like smack the blade you could take a bat and smack this blade and you might break the blade but you would not move this handle in my hand again particularly because of how well this front shoulder and thumb ramp are designed but also because of just the amount that these all these grooves and even this back one here sitting right into my palm the way that these are all holding my hand right where the knife wants it to be this is super secure in my hand. And my hand is not going to move while I am using this knife. And so if you don't care about having to put a little bit more force into your cut, because the blade is not really ground to cut nearly as well as some others, um, and you really want a blade that is secure, and especially if you've got larger mitts and you want something that you can just grab onto and hang onto and just tear through stuff and you're okay putting a bit more force in that cut, 
This handle, in that sense, is one of the better hard use handles in the industry. It feels very similar to a beefed up version of what the AD20, this is I guess the AD20.5 does, and it ends up feeling quite similar to a full size AD20. And not only does it feel quite similar, I mean, you can see how very similar the lines are between the two, where basically, I mean, Demco, I'm not gonna accuse them of stealing here, but if you just look at the bottom of this knife and you look at the two next to each other, they're doing pretty much the exact same thing. It's a full choil here, a half choil here, but it's the same thing. This is, these are two knives. They're both designed to hold your hand in one position and it's pretty much the same position. It's just, you know, the ramp is with the shark lock here and the ramp is on the back of the blade there. So this is really good if you want something that locks your hand in, but if your hands aren't the right size or if you want something that you can more easily, you know, move up and down the knife, um, if you want a knife that is easy to just naturally flick out and go to work, a handle with all these grooves like this won't be that as much. Is it hard? No. I flick it out and I just have to adjust my hand a little bit to get where it needs to be and then it's very comfortable once I'm there, but it's not as easy to move up and down this knife. It's not as easy to get where I need it to be as it would be on a more neutral handle. Again, that's the choice that they that Spyderco made with the Manix. It's meant to be a knife for harder use. And so they're more, they care more about keeping your hand in place. That's another place that this feels like a very, especially with how big this handle is, this is hand filling in that it fills your whole hand and has a bunch sticking down the back. This feels more like carrying a Spyderco military than carrying a PM2. This knife, this handle feels gigantic for your basic EDC tasks. It feels ridiculous when I pull out my Manix and try to use it to cut and open an Amazon box. Like it feels like such ridiculous overkill. And in fact, it feels a little clunky in that capacity, especially if I've been using stuff like, again, you know, if I pull out my Andela here, this feels easy effortless. I don't have to think about where the edge of the blade is. It just does the job. It's once you do it a few times, it's literally just easy muscle memory. This feels it's it's almost like trying to drive like a muscle car on a tight uh, on a road with tight turns and things like that. Like it's just it's it, it's a lot. <laughs> this knife is a lot, and it's you feel that a lotness when you try to push it into lighter duty tasks. The other, the last problem with how big and chunky this thing is, and it's part of the reason that the lightweight version, yes, it's lightweight, and in fact, it's impressively lightweight because these FRN handles have almost no steel liners in them. The only liner is really what's necessary for this, um, for this locking mechanism to work and a little bit near the pivot. Um, three ounces for a knife this size is very light, but this is huge huge in the pocket. Since I've been pulling it out, let me compare it to my Indela here. This is, you know, it doesn't look that much bigger when I put it that way. When I put it that way, it's a little bit thicker, but it really, a lot of it comes down to how much this hump sticks out and how much at its thickest part, how thick this knife is. This is a knife that takes up your entire pocket. Um, the clip works great, and the way it hangs, it tends to hang a lot out of the way. Though interestingly, this is a um, you know, this is a wire clip that is a relatively shallow carry wire clip. But this thing, even though it's light and even though it's not thick, this will take up your entire pocket, or at least it takes up my entire pocket. And so, while I appreciate that it's light some of the benefit of that lightness is counteracted by the fact that it's still taking up my entire pockets. Maybe I can have a slim wall or something like that in there, like one of those little card holder wallets, but I don't wanna have anything else in my pocket with my Manix 2, which is not the case with a PM2. Um, if I just look at, it's not the case with an AD 20.5. You know, all those knives, all, a lot of your other typical EDC knives I'm okay having a knife and something else in that pocket. This is big enough that it fills up the entire pocket. It's another reason that this feels 
a little bit challenged as an EDC knife, unless your EDC involves regular harder use, unless you really need a knife that you can push harder. If you're your average person who just is cutting boxes and envelopes and stuff like that all day, this knife is going to feel bigger than what you need in your pocket. It's going to feel bigger than what you need in your hand. It's going to feel thicker than what you need behind the edge and the blade is going to be thicker and a little more ungainly than what you need in the blade. And so it just ends up feeling like a lot. Um, and you combine that with the fact that it's not cheap um, with how Spyder Co. has been raising their prices. Now again, Spyder Co., especially from Golden, Colorado, the quality is there. Every bit of finishing in here, this isn't a complicated knife, but the finishing is very good throughout. They do excellent jimping. Their grind lines are crisp. The laser etching is crisp. The way the FRN is done here, the volcano pattern is very, very nice. Gives you tons of grip without being too rough. It also looks really nice. It's just a very complicated pattern. They do a very nice, it's almost like a light contour, but just the way they do this whole edge, the way they get rid of that texture, even edge around all your screws here. All the screws are nice and even. They're not flush, but they are evenly not flush, just a little bit domed over the FRN. And by the way, it's an older one, so these are all pins. In the newer Spyderco Manix 2 lightweights, these are all going to be screws, so this actually does become something that you can change the scales on potentially, and there are a couple scale makers that are starting to do that. You can't swap the scales on a G10 version and a lightweight version, even in that case, because this ball lock is different, but you're starting to be able to put aftermarket stuff on here. But everything about it is well done. The action is very nice. The action on the lightweight version is noticeably worse than the action on the, um, on the G10 version. The things that they have done to this ball lock and the fact that it's just, you know, not mounted steel liners, it's not, it doesn't drop shut quite as smoothly and easily. It still drops shut, but it's not quite as nice. The detent isn't quite as crisp. And there's a couple little audio notes that you don't get in the lightweight version that you get in the G10 version. It's all aesthetic. Functionally, it's just as good and it's still one of the better detents that Spyderco makes. It's still a very fun and fidgety knife. It's just not quite as really, really cool in the way the G10 ones are. But everything about this is well done. It's well, it's well fit, it's well finished. It's got great materials. You always get great steels that are well heat treated from Spyderco. It's very good. Still, it's a $200 knife, which isn't cheap. Now, if you're looking for a hard use knife, you're looking for something that you can beat the snot out of, people have said that the Manix 2 is one of the best on the market for that, and that remains too true today. Um, if you're looking for a knife, again, I'll pull out your Demco here because their lines are so similar. If your goal is to have a knife that you can beat on a hard use knife that can also, you know, isn't a strider that can sometimes flex into EDC tasks if you want to. The Manix is absolutely the better knife for that. It's got a better grind. It's got a better handle. The differences between the handles absolutely favor the Manix. And personally, I even like the ball lock better than the shark lock. This is a better knife and it's better made to the manufacturing quality. And granted, these are both about the same price. If anything, this one is a bit more expensive. This one, I would say, is manufactured to an even higher standard than this one. Obviously, you're getting G10 instead of FRN, so there's a little bit of a material difference there. But you're also getting S90V instead of, I think this one's 20CV. And you're getting Made in America versus Made in Taiwan. So it's pretty much a wash when you count the materials, origin, all that sort of stuff, and sort of how much cost went into this. And yet this one's still a little bit cheaper. So if you want a hard use knife, and you want a lightweight carryable hard use knife, the Manix is a really, really compelling option. It's relatively light. It's relatively thin. The hand ergonomics are fantastic for that one use case. And this blade is really good to beat on and to push hard. Now, the caveat that's hanging over this whole review is if you're asking me, okay, but I just want an EDC knife. I just want a general, general use knife. Should I get the Manix or should I get the PM2? To me, that is really clear 
The PM2 is a significantly better knife for your light duty stuff. The PM2 is a significantly better knife for your everyday stuff. The PM2 is significantly better light, better for light duty. That blade gets much sharper with the, with the right edge on it. That handle works much better under lighter duty tasks and it does take up less space in the pocket. Um, it's just easier to use. It's, it's a less uncomfortable knife to use unless you got very big hands. If you got very big hands, then you may prefer the ergonomics of the Manix pretty substantially. So that's the one other group that really likes them, that would really like the Manix. If you got big, big hands, the Manix is great for you. I don't. So that sort of concludes my review of the Manix. Um, the Manix Lightweight in particular. I'll have a separate review of the G10 version coming up. It is a very good knife, but it is a purpose-built knife. It is a knife that is meant for heavier duty tasks. Don't think of it as a hard use EDC. It is not a hard use EDC. It is a hard use knife that happens to be okay at EDC stuff, but it's only okay at it. If you've got a need for a hard use knife in your collection, or even a want, or you just think it's fun, or like me, you like the ball lock, it is a fun knife to have. The action is great. The manufacturing is very good. And even though, you know, 200 bucks is not cheap, you're getting a lot of knife here for $200. Even though it's, you know, FRN, it's extremely well done FRN, great steels, great manufacturing, and made in the USA to boot. Just know what you're getting. That's really where I end up with the Manix. Know what you're getting. And if you're the target audience, you're going to love it. And if you're not, you might end up sort of where I do, which is the Manix is fun, but... I never carry it because for the stuff that I need, it's just not ever going to be the thing that I'm going to carry. I've got other hard use knives that I personally like a little bit more. Again, that's mostly because my hands are small and this knife doesn't work that well with smaller hands. And it's just doesn't bring me a lot of joy as an EDC. I'll put it that way. So there you go. That's the Manix 2 Lightweight. Very good, but very targeted. Hope you found that useful. Hope it was a good use of your time, and I will see you again soon.